my base is hideous and it desperately needs an upgrade so let's turn it into the ultimate cottage core forest complete with massive mountains lush rivers and most importantly giant mushrooms but before we start building anything i'll need to obtain the materials required for this monumental project meaning complicated farms requiring a lot of comparators and observers so i'll need a bit of quartz like this pile that i'm standing on I need to mine it. Let me just clean up some of this rubble. Goodbye. Ah, uh, yes. Everybody's favorite mechanic in all of Minecraft. Trampling farmland by jumping on, on each block. Very very slowly. I do still need to rip out all of this podzol and replace it with a bit more greenery, so I should really make a bone meal farm which doubles as a moss farm, doing the big brain two stones with one bird thing. And I shall build it over here in my uh, oceanic industrial area. I don't really have a name for this place, it's just where all the farms go that I need but don't want to have around all the time. Hey, what's, uh, <laughs> what's he doing over there? Doesn't matter, I need concrete. And that should be enough. It's a little laggy when it runs, but it's working great. If you look closely, you can see that all of the signs in this farm have the names of viewers who are watching the live streams. Yes, I do stream all of this, and I archive all of the streams on my channel, so you can go back, watch the hundreds of hours of work if you'd like, except for the 24-hour stream, because I didn't realize it at the time, but YouTube doesn't save streams that are 11 hours or longer. Isn't that quirky? Now, I made the bone meal farm there for two important reasons. One, so I can run the fungus farm that I built where I was just standing, and two, so I can run the absolutely insane fungus tree farm designed by Krebs where I'm currently standing. I just noticed this weird lighting bug over here. Uh, yeah. This farm produces an incredible amount of items, so hopefully this amount of shulker loaders is enough. Let's turn it on and see what this thing can do. Uh, it's not, it's not enough. Yeah, so apparently this makes like 300,000 items per hour. So my very naive storage approach is, shall we say, not even remotely good enough. So let's tear it down and build something better. I've given myself quite a lot of space to replace the single speed loaders with 6x loaders and I finally have a good reason to use Rapscallion's absolutely beautiful stack separator, which altogether looks something like this. So let's build it. Turns out I have all of the materials except powdered snow. Now let's build it.
apparently if the game crashes while you're running this thing, it's really, really bad. Anywho, I'm going to be building a snow farm because snow blocks are kind of similar to mushroom stems in appearance, but have the upside of being significantly easier to obtain in large quantities, and I, as always, take the lazy approach. I just need to check that the biome I'm in will not melt them. Uh, yep. Let's put them in the little holding container, and... Hmm. Well, that was supposed to be in his head. I guess I just need to rearrange all of this. And that's a lot better. With their heads inside of fence gates, they won't move, but they also won't suffocate. This way I can break all the snow underneath them without them wandering into the path of my shovel. Unfortunately, snowballs only stack up to 16, so this shulker box storage system is going to be unusually large. However, this is a perfect opportunity to use a box yeeter for a semi-automatic crafting system that'll look something like this. And after everything is crafted, I can use this shulker box loader to quickly store all of the snow blocks before they despawn. I decided to stop at around a quarter million snow blocks because I can only think of so many use cases for these things. However, the next material that I need is several hundred thousand leaves, which I don't know of a good farm for, so this one's going acoustic. If any of you know of a good automatic or semi-automatic leaf farm, please let me know. I've spent so many levels enchanting diamond hoes, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about how long that took, but, uh, it's not even remotely close to enough leaves, so... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do this, I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to do this again at some point. With a good majority of the materials in my possession, we can finally start putting in some of the big infrastructure. So hold on to your socks, because this one's going to be a bit excessive. But first, I must interrupt you with this video's sponsor. I lied, there is no sponsor. I personally spend months on each of these videos and I couldn't do it without amazing viewers like you. So if you wanna support this channel, please click the little red button. It's absolutely free. It allows me to keep doing this full time. And for the 15% of you that have already clicked that button, let's try and get uh, at least 10 likes and three comments. And if we do that, I'll keep working on this series. Anyways, back to the big infrastructure. The worst thing to happen after building a tree for like 10 hours would be to have it all burned down in a thunderstorm. So I'm gonna go a little bit overboard on the lightning rods just for safety and more importantly, 
peace of mind. One big upgrade I've always wanted for a main base is having all of the beacon effects everywhere I go. So I'm going to need to place down quite a few beacons to cover this very expansive area, so let's start with this big tree. I'm not really a huge fan of having a bunch of lasers shooting out of the ground in my cottage core themed base, so I'm using a mod my friend Bashan made for me that allows tinted glass to make the beacon beams invisible instead of just turning them off. Honestly, how is this not a real feature? This will allow me to keep my base looking aesthetically pleasing without having to sacrifice these very handy buffs. And apparently I didn't have enough beacons, so I'll need to construct some more. Just gotta wait for this guy to spawn in. Any minute now. I should automate this. An abundance of stars, more like an abundance of foreshadowing. And I can finally set up the rest of the beacons. It's looking very tidy right now, and honestly, I'm quite proud of that. Those of you who are big fans of the series will remember this hole being filled with ungodly numbers of iron golems. Well, today is the day that I instead fill it with water, and maybe some fish, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, here's how you make a nice looking pond. Add water, obviously. Add in some texture variation in rock piles. Add in some plants and texture around the pond. Maybe add in a swinging bench, or like a tree with a tire swing. I'm sure a dock would be useful, so you can throw in one of those. Can't forget the fancy lily pads. All the fish I gathered during the axolotl breeding, some stars, and it doesn't look too bad. Well, that was a nice creative respite, but I'm back to material acquisition because that tree, it, uh, it took a lot of leaves. I'm also in need of black ink, so I'm going to make a quick and easy squid farm. And that's working perfectly fine. Next is the part I've been most excited for this whole time, building really tall mushrooms. Starting over here. So it turns out stripping logs is abysmally slow, so let's automate it. This is actually a concrete converter primarily, which I also needed, but it is a very convenient way to strip logs. Also, this is a very lovely way to showcase how useful the Tweakeroo mod is for watching farms in action while you're using them. And it's an incredibly helpful tool when it comes to troubleshooting more complicated redstone machines. But anyways, back to building. I've decided to put in a dark oak path connecting all the different features in the base area, which will look similar to this path that I designed a long time ago in my creative world. It'll take a bit, but I'm sure it'll make the base as a whole a lot more cohesive. My friend, Mr. Max Mondays, an amazing builder, go check out his channel, sent me a design for an absolutely massive wool farm that I'm going to build right here. But first, I need to find some sheep to breed and put them into the farm. You come here, and you, and you, follow me please. Welcome back to your new home. Hmm. Heck. Okay, you two, please make babies, and all of you need to go. Sorry.
It takes an annoyingly long time to get all of these sheep in place in this farm, and thankfully, I'm only building the bottom layer of this thing. There's a four layer design altogether with an automatic shear restocking system. It's like, it's really slick, but I don't really need that level of overkill for this current project. So I won't be building the other three layers for a while, but at some point I'll come back and do that. Something you may find interesting is that this wool farm is currently taking me longer to construct than that big tree at the main base. Now ain't that something. One thing that I do find very satisfying about this farm's design is that when the sheep get sheared, their wool pops up through the blocks, gets washed away on top. And it's just, it's really cool to chill here for a moment and watch it all in action. Especially after building it for so long. And then of course, just AFK overnight to get several shulkers full of every wool color. I did unfortunately use up all of the glass in my possession building that wool farm. So now I'm going to build Rapscallion's equal item distribution system to make a decent, albeit small furnace array. And apparently it's directional, so I gotta rebuild it. Looking good. One thing I've done to save a bit of time in designing all of these mushrooms is make the schematics modular. By this I mean that the mushroom caps are separate schematics from the mushroom stalks, so that way you can mix and match between them to get a wide array of designs with significantly reduced effort when it comes to designing. This in conjunction with using the schematics when building allows me to do bigger and bigger projects without spending too many months in a row not producing any videos. Of course these schematics are available for channel members on YouTube and patrons on Patreon. At this point in the building process, I already have all of the mushrooms and stems I designed. I just need to choose where they will fit in best, and I think a giant purple one would look good right behind me. Also, I built a little cottage in front of me, but that's not very important. See, it fits in just perfectly, though none of these mushrooms are really blending into the terrain all that much. So I think I should try and add in some tall grass. I mean like artificially tall grass. I think that really pulls it all together. And I even threw in some ants stealing from a picnic and large flowers to fill out the empty space. I also don't want every inch of the path to be canopied by leaves, so I'm making a portion of it surrounded by crumbling walls. and it looks something like that. Additionally, I thought of adding in some cypress trees to bring a little more life to this area. I was originally planning on building another mountain here, but I have a better idea in mind of how to connect this down to the lake instead of walling it off. First, I'll need to copy a schematic of this area into my creative world like this, then world edit in a wood cylinder, rotate that cylinder, set it on the ground like so, and after decorating it to look like a mossy overgrown hollowed log, I'll take a schematic of it, line that schematic back up in the hardcore world, and after an hour or two of building, you have a fancy transition from your path down to the water. Of course, that isn't the only decoration I needed around here, so I've added in some more tree canopies to the pathway that lead over to this little market area. Currently, it's kind of empty, but I have some ideas. Like a little snail shop where this snail here is selling fancy new shells for one melon slice each to lovely customers, such as this lad, who is ready with a melon slice. I've also turned this blue stall into a little flower shop with a grow light on the ceiling. And this red stall has become a little food shop because of course it has. And if you walk from the market area under the big tree and out the other side, you get to this abandoned flower garden, a small patch of nether wart, and the tent of the being that used to watch over this area before it was washed away by the mists. I have almost finished terraforming my base, but this massive eyesore of nothingness over here behind me needs to be rectified. I was going to show you the process of how I designed this terrain with World Edit and Voxel Sniper, but I messed up the recording and I mean, look at this, it's potato quality. So we're just going into a time lapse for this one.
and that looks substantially better. These waterfalls are currently very silly looking because they go to nowhere. I can fix this quickly by making them flow into a river, which requires just digging a hole, sprinkling in some stones, filling that hole with water, filling that water with plants, and of course, adding in the myriad details that give it a sense of life and vibrancy. At least that's the plan. I also extended the path decorations all the way down to the lake. However, this is nothing new. What is new is this idea that I've had for a lovely forest creature picnic. Still needs a tablecloth, some worms as guests, cups to drink out of, plates with a tasty dirt meal, and a trident in an invisible item frame makes the perfect utensil for these guys. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how they use it. That doesn't, that doesn't matter, right? I also invited in some snails and a bee as a special guest. I have to say that this little picnic is definitely my favorite build that I've ever done. It's so adorable. One thing that is very time consuming and quite boring is bone mealing this entire area so that I have little tufts of grass everywhere. But it needs to be done. For one of the final touches, I want to add in a small pink tree with light colored bark. And for that, I'll need some stripped birch wood. And I think I'll build it right around here. Nice. The last thing I'll be working on for this project is decorating that archway. But first, I need to tie up some loose ends like decorating this pond. But I'm out of lily pads, so I get to play this fun mini game of smashing into all the lily pads. It's actually underrated how fun this is. Just like that is looking a lot better. I also have a plan for making this empty area a bit less boring. First, I'll need to flatten it out, then make a checkered finish line, throw in some railings on the side, some arches over the top, a starting line with a nice dirt floor, some competitors, maybe even one that's a bit nefarious, you know, not playing by the rules. And of course, the adoring fans cheering for their favorite team. It's a snail race, where this competitor has been poisoned by the guy in the back, and the winner may be using performance enhancing drugs. Don't you just love sports? And now it is finally time to decorate the archway, which has been barren for far too long. Just gotta set down some scaffolding, plant a lot of glow berries on the ceiling, add some leaves to the sides around the top to act as thicker and curvier vines, then go underneath and pull them down so that they hang a bit. I would like to add a tree on top of the arch, but green's a little boring, so I'll go with yellow. I just need to build it on top of the arch, and that's really all there is to it. Thanks for joining me for this small, roughly 1500 day excursion of just building a silly little mushroom forest. I have very big plans for 2023, but for now, I must go AFK while I sort the absolute mess of items that I took out for this project. So I'll see you on the next one, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>